Because you know I'm all about that buzz, about that buzz, no tickets. I'm all about that buzz, about that buzz, no tickets. I'm all about that buzz, about that buzz, no tickets. I'm all about that buzz, 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 buzz. Good day, good night, and welcome to a brand new edition of After It Works. Ooh, troublesome time in the world of the impact. Yesterday was the round table with all the journalists and people, bloggers, uh, podcasters. Everybody was around the table to talk about, well, the state of the union kind of of the impact. And Joey Saputo made a big coming out. There are a lot of big waves and a lot of people got talking about it today. It's quite the controversy in a way. A couple points came out of that roundtable, you could say, and we're going to talk about that today on How the Woodworks. So, uh, let's just get dive into it. We'll air some grievances today. We'll uh, put everything out there. We'll clean the laundry in public, and hopefully everybody's going to feel better in the morning. It's that type of show today. It's going to make you feel better about the whole situation by the time we get all done with that show. Let's just start by uh, the couple comments that came out of that round table with Joey Saputo yesterday. Well, uh, the attendance, only 15,000 tickets sold for the Pachuca game on March 3rd. By the way, get your tickets, really important. We need to mark history, and the way he said it, we need to mark history better than uh, probably just not a lack of tickets sold. That buzz, that famous buzz, it's all about that buzz, apparently, and it's not there. And because it's not there... Well, Joey Saputo's not happy, really not happy, and he's putting, he's like literally almost having a midlife crisis, re-questioning all the choices, re-questioning the fact that he's wondering if Montreal is an actual soccer city and all that. Well, let's just start by the first point, the attendance. The the couple points of the attendance, there was the fact the lack of media coverage and uh, the lack of buzz in the city. It's pretty much the, the three big points. The fact that the impact did not, sparked the imagination of the youth, of the people, yet did not become a major part of the city, it is really bugging Joy Saputo. We're not going to understand that with the amount of money that he put into it. it. It's really hard. There's a couple of points. I'm going to address those three points. I'll start by the lack of attendance. And that's a big one, the lack of attendance. Yes, it's going to be related to the second point, the lack of media coverage. But they're two different beasts. Even though the goal is almost looks the same to put people in seats or get the media to talk about it more to get more people in seats, it's different and it needs to be approached in totally different ways. I'll start the show by saying too, what do I know? All right. I don't know. Squat. I exactly. I'm a podcaster. What do I know? Right. How would I know how to run the impact or whatever? The one thing I do know is I'm a fan. And really, I do take that club and take that sport of soccer and take that league in this city at heart. And it hurts me when people are as that team even going to exist in a couple of years. It, it does hurt me. So by saying the following, I'm just putting my feelings and my thought out there so you can do whatever you want with it. But to fix the attend to fix the attendance problem, if you're looking at the A Day of uh, the impact, the Montreal Impact at San Claude Bier, the CCR, remember when it was three, uh, thirteen thousand full jam pack with the atmosphere it was crazy with Jill just going ape, you know what behind the net, it was a great time. But the thing is, back then the impact really worked with the grassroots, trying to it was friends with all the soccer association, it was involved in everything like that to get those. Young kids, those people, those families, the family, the, the the age group. That was the families were the focus group for the impact, were the type of people they were looking for to get in the attendance. And the same with Major League Soccer. They tried to change, to broaden that spectrum of what type of fan you're looking at with maybe forgetting a little bit about the grassroots and still keeping that, that basin of attendance there is the pool of attendance is there you just need to go grab them and get the attention and with the grassroots it was a way to get a couple thousand sure every game you you knew they were going to be there for sure and you need to maybe go back to that way of thinking a little bit to uh might not want to make that much money with the tickets but so you need to build that fandom back to build that core fan that was young, like 10 years old, he was brought to the stadium with his team and fell in love 
with the club even more because with his with his buddies that he plays soccer with and he goes to the stadium and all together they see a great show a great spectacle it doesn't matter if they lose or win if they have fun it's still yeah at the end yes if it wins it's a lot easier but even on that day if that kid becomes a fan and is impressed he's going to be marked for life and a couple of years from then he's going to be come back with his family or by himself or with buddies and spend money that's what you need to go and grab it's almost a one by one thing you need to Get those people in the stadium and once they're there, you need to make them come back. And it seems it's been the case. There's big there's been big attendance for the impact if we're looking at Satsaputo or a big oh geez, there was almost sixty thousand people for some games. The fact that when that happened, they did not make fans that were willing to come back easily to the product tells you something. Tells them that there's a way to change something. There's been a lack of fan retention. That's what it's been missing. Create new fans and re, re, and try to keep those fans in. You know, try to keep them in the boat. Keep them addicted. Keep them happy and passionate about the club. And to do that, you need to have a good atmosphere. That brings a little side note that I want to say. The atmosphere has been decreasing over the last 12 months. As Tad Saputo. Yes, the performances on the field is one of the reasons why the atmosphere has been declining. Uh, there's been some, I don't want to say fight, there's been some arguments between supporters group, creation new ones, and now there's going to be supporters group on both sides of the pitch with one in 114 and these 132, obviously, and 131. Hopefully everybody can get together and make an atmosphere that is reminiscing of the first years in MLS and reminiscing of the glory days of the impact in at CCR, in, in the NASL and the A-League, and all those second division and third division league that the impact were in la, the years prior Major League Soccer. So Major League Soccer is a different type of animal, too, when you approach it and attack it. And if you're looking at the other teams, the way they do and the way they pack their stadium, they're going about it really differently than the impact they're trying to. And there's uh, that's one of the other problems that the impact have or had, or they should recognize it if they want to move forward, is you might not have all the answers. Sometimes you need to look abroad to look to somebody else's ways to do things to maybe realize that the way you go about things is not the best. Who Sometimes we're all human, we do make mistakes. And the way that the supporters and the crowds are filling up the stadium is really... It's been, what, 16,000 average last year, steadily declining? And you need to have a type of crowd. If you're looking at Colorado, Real Salt Lake, they get a lot more people in those stadiums. They created a core fan group that's almost 20,000. And when they fill that stadium, it it has an effect on the games. And Saputo has, the stat Saputo this time, hasn't had that yet. And it seems this is one of the reasons why the fans don't come back. This. That stadium is soulless, yes. And yes, you can say it's because it hasn't been a championship in Major League Soccer that gives that soul or that imprint or that... So there's something missing. It's hard to put a finger on it, but there's something missing to spark the imagination of fans and wa- and convincing them to come back to the product. That's one of the, re- the first reasons. So, you need to look at the way you're looking at the grassroots and get those grassroots back involved get the grassroots of soccer the community there's a hundred thousands of soccer in the greater montreal area that do play soccer and that do like the sports now you need to bridge that gap from them liking the sport to play recreationally or competitively and putting them as fans of the sport to watch and especially to watch the impact that is one of the first key in my opinion to get the attendances back at San Saputo. And I think it's one of the things they should look at. Same for, we're talking about the grassroots, it should go up to the pyramid of soccer. There should be an involvement of the Impact, the Montreal Impact Club as a whole, with the PLSQ. If we're looking at the League One Ontario today, they had a press conference. You can listen to the whole press conference on the Two Solitude Soccer Podcast. Dwayne was there today, recorded the whole thing. So you can listen to this if you want. It's really interesting. There was a members of the PLSQ present as well. Well, Toronto FC has a team in the PL- in the, the League One Ontario, which is the same level as PLSQ. Semi-pro or third division Canadian development type of league. And PLSQ, if Montreal Impact could have a team there, and it would be beneficial for the Impact, it would broaden the, it would broad the brand. The brand would be present on one more 
league in one more field at a time. We'd be present at more places. Yes, it's on a different type of scale. There's not many, many people, but it will prove to the soccer community as a whole that the impact is really involved in development, not just of its own academy and its own players, which is fine and all good, but the development of soccer as a whole by having a team in the league that it doesn't control, like the PLSQ. I think it would be really... It would demonstrate a lot for the impact to do that, to have a team in the PLSQ, and I think it's the future. I think it needs to be done, and I'm surprised it hasn't been done already. League One has overstepped. In my mind, League One is the goal now for PLSQ, but to be in League One is only in the second season. PLSQ has been there for a couple more years, so PLSQ need to step it up a little bit, and I think the impact can have a lot of things to do with that by fielding a team in that championship in the PLSQ. And that could be another real good thing. Can you imagine at the end of the season if the Impact Academy wins the PLSQ and the TFC Academy wins League One again? You get TFC Academy versus Montreal Academy in a competitive interprovincial cup. That could be interesting. That could be fun. That does go satisfy your grassroots supporters. And it could be another way for the club to make some new fans. And that could be another way to get people in the seats. PLSQ involvement. That could be good. Now, the second point I want to talk about, which is uh, the lack of media coverage, a lack of mainstream media coverage would be the better term because there is media coverage. If you would open your eyes, you would see that there is alternative media, even though I hate that term, alternative media. The way I love it is grassroots media. I think it sounds better, first of all. It doesn't associate it with the type of music. And I think it's just grassroots media is more the way I feel about it because I consider myself alternative if you like or more grassroots because i'm just a podcaster right so but if they would embrace those medias and give those medias some uh, interviews some time to time give some uh, credentials it will help because w- w- the only thing we love to do is to try to grow the game trying to grow the attention trying to grow the support and love of a club that's the whole goal of a podcast it's just to make more people watch that product and that soccer on the field and make those people that watch that soccer on the field interested in all the culture and all the things around the soccer club the good and the bad because it's all about the balance and that's what's needed is a better understanding of the grassroots media now for the coverage of mainstream media there is a fault i believe by every official broadcasters every other type of broadcasters if you talk about tv aspar rds tsn if you're talking about the regular broadcasters like TVA, uh, Radio Canada, CBC, Global, CTV, they do have a fault at it. Yeah, they don't treat the impact on a fair, uh, fairly the way they treat other major league club in cities, and they don't. That's true. They could build the brand up like they did with the CFL. If you remember 25 years ago, before the CFL came back to Montreal, the league was in shambles. The support of the league was as an all-time low. Nobody gave a damn about that league. Then TSN got that con- that TV contract, and they decided that it would make something out of the CFL. They got behind that product, pumping it everywhere they could, hyping it up, creating stories, making people interested in that product by having documentaries by having interviews by having players talk about it by revolutionizing the way they show a canadian football game on television they did that in the mid 90s and in the part of this country cfl is the top thing if you're looking at the saskatchewan if you look, edmonton cfl is huge and one of the reasons because of that is because tsn got behind the product a couple of decades ago and they decided to make something out of it if a TV broadcaster would get behind, don't have to get behind the whole league on this case, just get behind the MFC and really decide to go behind them. A weekly wrap-up show, a half an hour hosted by whoever you'd like, just, just does interviews and wrap-up shows and just talk about the impact. Have that, 30 minutes a week. The games, obviously. And have a 30 minute, an hour a week show type of 24 CH, but with the impact. A uh, EMFC 360 degrees. 
to 360 degrees of UFC or to six degrees of UFC, whatever you want to name that show, that could be good. And you get the behind the scene, you get to show the players though. Because the whole goal of that 30 minutes an hour documentary every week would be to create stars out of your players. Because that's one of the reasons why there's no peop- not enough people in the stands because... Yes, Devaya was a star, but that star was built up. We knew Devaya was coming in early March, and they only announced it late June. And by that time, Devaya was able to get known and get noticed, and people were interested, and they were going out of their way to search on Google who the hell Devaya was. And by the time he went and he came to town, I mean, well, he was already a star. They need to do that again, and there a way to do that on a bigger level, and with the whole team would be to have a 30-minute hour documentary type of thing every week if they're willing to open the doors of the locker room and open the doors of the what's going on behind the curtain in Stad Saputo. They're willing to do that, to have that one-hour documentary. Can you imagine? You see behind the scenes practice. You see the guy that's really good at free kick. You get stories out of those things. You, you make stars out of your players in that show. You showed the struggle and the way they overcome that struggle and the way they become better human being, better athlete, and the way they become almost superheroes in that show. And after that show, you're pumped and you want to see those players because they become more noticeable, you can relate to them, they become humanized as well as becoming bigger than life because you see them on TV all the time. And that would make them stars. And that would make the whole team stars as well because that's one of the things it's lacking the team is not considered a star in the the city yet and it would be really fun that it does it would be really appreciate i would appreciate it as a fan if the team that i love the most was treated fairly in the city it's not it's not there yet because no people are not clamoring for it enough people are not asking for it enough if you're tired of the fact that mls and the impact are not getting enough coverage let the broadcasters know. All of you, let them know my numbers. Every single one of you can affect it, but we need to do it all together by telling the people in the right places, the people in charge of those broadcast networks, of all those radio shows, radio TV shows, all those guys in mainstream media, us as listeners and consumers of their product, we do have a say in it by letting them know that we want our team to be covered more. And the whole coming out of the claws of Joey Saputo yesterday was probably planned, to be honest. It was probably a work in wrestling term. It was probably uh, meant to get that attention that it does have today. And to be quite honest, it's working. Joey Saputo did one thing. It could be good. It could be bad in the long run. But at least today on every single channel, they were talking about the impact. It was a big headline and it was news. And people did talk about the impact today. So... Maybe he was right to do that that uh, big splash yesterday, Joey, because today people are talking about the impact, and that is a step in the right direction. But eventually, they need to talk, be talking about the impact for the right reason. And that brings me to uh, probably the best reason why the impact needs to change things. Montreal is a city of winner. Win at that level, or show... Or show a lot of effort that you're trying to, at least. And be consistent. If you want to be treated as a major professional team, you do need to act like one. And that does cover the first part of the show. And we're just leaving. We'll take a small, like, interlude, musical interlude. And that song was really the feeling I had last night after reading and watching All those TV shows and reading the articles about the whole Joey story yesterday. That was the song that was in my head. And hopefully after this, we can move on to better things. We'll come back on After It Works with talking about Pichuca after the break.
Damn, that was some good music. Brings back so many memories. Damn, that was good. You get the drift, right? That was exactly the feeling I had last night. All right, moving on to better things. Moving on to Pachuca. Let's talk about their season. They're having beginning of the uh, 2015, uh, their spring season in the Liga MX, because divided into two, so their spring season, Pachuca. Four games played, one win, three losses, two goals for, four goals against. They're uh, 16th out of 18th team. Only in front of Leon. that's where, uh, what's his name? What's his face? Uh, Rafa Marquez plays, Leon. And you got uh, Morella, the last place. Their only win of the season for Pachuca was January 24th against Queretaro. Queretaro, that's a team in Mexico where Camilo is playing right now, former Vancouver striker, winner of the Golden Boot, if you remember, in 2013, right in front of the Valle. Oh, that sucker. Oh, yeah, he did it. So, now he plays for Queretaro. That's the only win of Pachuca. They lost against Cruz Azul in the first game, January 10th, and their second game, another 1-0 loss against Monterrey, and then their win against Pachuca, against Queretaro, and they lost again January 31st, last weekend, Saturday, against Chivas uh, Mexico, or Guadalajara, the mother team. Kubo Torres did play in that game, by the way, before he makes his way back to MLS in Houston later on this season. Yeah, so that's a little uh, note on Pachuca, not having the best type of season. Could be good, because the team Montreal would pull on the field versus Pachuca should be decent, should be really good. It's going to be a new keeper that's going to be with the Montreal Impact. Uh, like said on the Twitter feed of Off the Woodworks, before everybody else, my, I tailed my own horn a couple of days ago. Uh, Christian Knight, I heard a rumor that Christian Knight out of Indy, he had another rumor, I got a text from a contact in Indy, that he let me know that a big talking about the Knight was going to come to the Montreal Impact until the NSL season comes for the Impact to use him in the Champions League with uh, injury with I mean, just uh, there's an injury with one of the keepers right now. Eric Kronberg is cap tied. Uh, Maxim Kripo is hurt at the shoulder. And uh, Kronberg is cap tied with Kansas City. So he can't play in that competition because of that fact. And because Evan Bush is going to play, I guess, a lot too in Major League Soccer. Well, you know, Montreal needed a keeper. And they got Christian Knight out of Indy on loan until uh, March 4th. So basically, uh, Montreal is not banking on, uh, well, it's basically a, a late, late emergency loan to uh, counter the fact that uh, Kepo is injured. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see. He's a decent keeper. He played in the first and second division in Germany, and he is playing with the Indy 11 since last year. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see how that goes down. But you heard it first on Out the Works. And for uh, for me tonight, it's all. It's going to be all for us today on After What Works. Enough bashing and bantering now. Get your things together. Get your tickets. And let's all cheer for the blue, the black, and the white. Let's cheer for the impact. Let's cheer for our boys. Let's cheer for Montreal to shock the world by beating Pachuca in the Champions League and making its way into the semifinals of that competition. Why not? That would put a band-aid on the whole buzz situation and until next time have a great soccer people because you know i'm all about that buzz about that buzz no tickets i'm all about that buzz about that buzz no tickets i'm all about that buzz about that buzz no tickets i'm all about that buzz 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 buzz